Good morning, Bag of Buddies. Well, we've been traveling around Wales for the last week and we're gonna finish things strong here in the capital of Wales, Cardiff. It's a beautiful sunny day. We have 24 hours to make the most here in Cardiff. We're gonna do a bunch of stuff, but it's early, so first things first, coffee. Well, this morning we didn't really know where to get a coffee, so we tweeted out for recommendations and a guy named Peanut Turner, whose Twitter handle is Peanut is Mint, uh, recommended this place, Coffee Barker, in the Castle Quarter Arcade. So it's pretty cool. It's this beautiful old building uh, and this super vibey little coffee shop. We've gotten some avo toast with egg. Mark got, you know, some bacon and sausage stuff, and a cortado and a flat white. And it's just really cool when you guys get to tell us where to go and you give us these stellar recommendations. So thank you, Peanut Turner. Right across the street from Cardiff Castle, which we're going to explore next, but you know, one of the main features of Cardiff are all these Edwardian and Victorian arcades. Not like video game arcades, but arcades as in covered malls with natural uh, sunlight, which is cool because even if it's raining, you can still explore all these shops and it makes it feel like it's, you know, a bit sunnier than it could be. All right, so we just got to Cardiff Castle, which has been the center of town since Roman times when they built a fort here. It's pretty cool because there's three very distinct layers of history in this castle complex. The Romans founded it uh, in, in 1066 when the Normans came, they built the castle keep, which is in the center of the castle complex. And then in the 1800s, the Victorians updated the whole thing with their uh, very unique flair. There's some really quirky things in the Victorian side of the building, but first we're gonna check out the Norman castle keep. Pretty awesome, great view up here from the top of the castle keep. Obviously this was a strategic uh, location so they would have been able to see all of the surrounding countryside to protect from invasion. Pretty crazy to think that the Normans, you know, which were Vikings who invaded France, went on to invade uh, England and also Wales. It's uh, pretty nuts that they made it all the way here. Crazy that, that like there are so many castles in Wales. It has 600 castles, which is more than any other country in Europe, and it just kind of points to that history, like you just said, of this being an area that fought off occupation from the Romans, the Normans, and the English. And uh, castles like these are like present in every single city, in every single town, and that's just you know that was part of what was needed at the time to, to make military stability here. So at this point in the 1800s, the, this part of the castle, the whole castle, was owned by the Butte family. The Butte family at the time was the richest family in Europe and possibly the world, and that was because of coal exporting. The hills behind Cardiff are big coal mining uh, communities, and this family grew extremely rich through mining, and you can just see the opulence of this room is, is a product of that, and, and kind of a testament to how wealthy they were. So they built this room called the Arab Room, uh, it was designed by the architect William Burgess and it was inspired by his travels through the Orient, the French Orientalist style. Even though this is on a small scale, it's incredibly opulent, it's incredibly detailed, and all of this gold it's not just gold paint, it's real gold. What's cool about this room is that it has a very interesting blend of 
oriental and European styles, you get images of animals and things that just would not appear in Islamic artwork. So it's kind of awesome to have like a blend of these two styles. So it's not known how much this costs, but it would have been millions and millions. It's just so impressive to see. All right, so we're outside the castle now, and another cool thing is the animal wall here, which was built by the same family, 1890s. They made all these cool statues. It was like a, like a zoo kind of thing here on the wall. A little seal, orangutan. Dude, that's not an orangutan, it's a baboon, bro. So let us know if you had your own animal wall, what animal would you put on the wall? Basically, we're asking you, what is your spirit animal? Let us know. According to an online quiz, I am an owl. And I am a hawk. Ah! Right guys, well the day continues. We're on our way to meet up with Sean from Loving Welsh Foods, who's gonna take us to the Cardiff Indoor Market and give us a little breakdown on some traditional Welsh foods. What's the story behind this market? So this was over 200 years ago where all the farmers used to come and sell their cattle and their sheep. Nowadays it's just a kind of quirky center with food shops, uh, material shops, gift shops. But you can still get food, right? Uh, yeah, loads of food. So what type of traditional Welsh foods can you find in this market? Okay, so uh, we're going to try lava bread, which is our Welsh seaweed. It's nothing yeah. to do with actual like molten lava. <laughs> no. Uh, we're then going to try some lovely cheeses. We've got like a hundred different cheeses in Wales. So we have a uh, nice little spread, four different cheeses. And we're starting from the softest to the strongest. Uh, this is like a Welsh take on brie. Bon appetit. Mmm, it's good. I love cheese. You might know this. And the stinkier, the better. So this is perolas, which is Welsh for blue pearl. Truly divine. Right, well we've officially found the coolest shop in the market. Marco's got himself a bit of a top hat. Now I've got myself a little bowler hat. Nice to meet you. This is my steampunk version with the stove hat. What do you think? All right, we are gonna hop on a water taxi and uh, try to catch the sunset down on the waterfront. All right, so now we're down at the waterfront. This wharf was like the point of export for all of the natural ores and minerals uh, and coal that was mined inside Wales, put on canals and barges, and exported from here around the world. Alex always likes to say, well, day has turned into night, and it's time to put the nose bag on and have some dinner. Cardiff is known very much for its nightlife, uh, but we're going to start off at this place called the Potted Pig, which has 36 types of gin, makes a great g and and serves up some amazing food. I've got the Brecon Gin, which is from Panarin, the distillery we visited yesterday in Brecon Beacon. Very nice. I got the Heyman's Old Tom, which is a recipe from the 1870s. We've got hints of elderberry and mint. And I just like saying elderberry. The space here is really cool. We're underground. 
And this used to be the vault of a bank, so it's a really cool atmosphere. We ordered the duck and the lamb, both are Welsh, and they look delicious. We got two more gin and tonics, and it's time to eat. All right, brother, cheers. Dude, last pint of the trip. Well, at least we're doing it in one of Wales' best craft breweries at Tiny, Tiny Rebel. Rebel. It's been an incredible trip so far. The last week has been eye-opening. It's been an adventure through a corner of the UK that we've never experienced before. You know, we knew a couple of things about Wales. But we didn't know very much. We knew that the language was unique, that the culture was very old and very different from the rest of the UK. And we knew that Wales was wild and beautiful. One of the foundations of uh, Vagar Brothers and the Travel Channel is the idea that the world is a cultural mosaic, that every single place is a different tile with a slightly different look at the world. And I think that a lot of foreigners, at least back home in the States, they kind of look at the UK as maybe this monolithic, like, single culture. It's so much more diverse than people realize. We learned a lot. We saw some really cool traditions. We had some, a ton of fun. I mean, the world's fastest zip line was pretty crazy. What was, what was the best moment for you? I really liked Conway. I liked Conway Castle. I just love the situation of the town and the castle on the estuary and the muscles that we had right afterwards. Yeah. That was really cool. For me, personally, driving through Snowdonia, just seeing these snow-capped hills, you know, stumbling upon those wild horses. Foraging. What about foraging? foraging? That was yeah. so cool. Well, anyways, guys, we're curious to hear what your favorite moments were, so don't hesitate to drop a comment. Let us know what your favorite moment from the trip was, what your favorite vlog was. Uh, make sure you tag your friends. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you enjoyed the series. And remember to subscribe and turn on notifications if you have not already. So big thanks to Visit Britain and Visit Wales for helping us make this series possible. Uh, also, stay tuned for bonus material. We've made a video about trying to pronounce Welsh town names that we are going to do very, very poorly. That will be coming out next. Uh, in the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we'll see you guys on the road. Cheers.